all round rest is a cheap possibility for whosoever cares to believe. All round rest. Now, think of it. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. What's the meaning? All round rest. He has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. What's that? All round rest. Godliness is profitable to all things, having the promise of the life which now is and one which is to come. What is that? All round rest. Welcome to Apostle TV. The message you're about to watch will definitely transform your life. Be blessed as you watch. Today is a covenant day of all round rest. Please believe that all round rest is one of the blessings of redemption. All round rest, peace that passes all understanding is part and parcel of the blessings of redemption. So is all round rest possible? Every provision of scripture is a cheap possibility with your faith. Cheap possibility with your faith. No provision of scripture will ever come through in your life without your faith. Blessed is she that believeth. There shall be performance of those things that are told her from the Lord. You don't believe, you can't see it. God's word is the most sure word of prophecy. What you don't believe, you never experience. All round rest is a cheap possibility for whosoever cares to believe. All round rest. Now, think of it. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. What's the meaning? All round rest. He has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. What's that? All round rest. Godliness is profitable to all things, having the promise of the life which now is and one which is to come. What is that? All round rest. We have the blessing of all round rest and redemption. You know what Jesus said? I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I've come to offer you life at its best. That's all round rest. Now, but how do we enjoy the reality of all round rest? We need the working knowledge of how to take delivery of every provision of scriptures. For instance, Christ has obtained for us power. That's okay. But how do we experience the reality of the power? My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee to see thy power and thy glory. They were in one accord in prayer and then power came down from heaven. They were threatened, they got back into prayer and they were filled again with the Holy Ghost and the place shook. So it's not something to wait for, it's something to work at. You see, when you find these floating teachings today on grace, it makes believers become absolutely irresponsible. God has done everything for you. You don't need to do anything. Sir. You can't live a sanctified life just hanging on what Christ has done. You must take responsibility to actualize it. Cast off the work of darkness. Don't toy with it. 
Purify yourself. Stop confessing. Take steps. Watch yourself of all these things. So there is a personal responsibility we must take to actualize everything that Christ has done. I mean, uh, he paid the price for our salvation, but until you repent, sir. Yes, sir. You can wear four-piece suit. It won't make a difference. Yes, sir. You have to repent to be saved. People don't believe they commit sin, so they don't confess any sin. So when will they be forgiven? So prayers are not answered. But iniquity is hid in the heart. Be careful. There is no modern truth. Be careful. Be careful. Now, be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. So there's a doing of it. First John 3, verse 7. Amen. It's not appropriation. There's a doing of righteousness. You can't be a thief and say we're righteous God in Christ Jesus. Is that how to be righteousness? Even the world that is not godly knows that stealing is a sin. Which righteousness are you? Be not deceived, he that doeth righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Jesus came and said, which of you convinces me of sin? So there is no provision of scripture that drop on your laps. You work it out. He said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You work it out. who are thirsty after righteousness they have challenges what of those who don't think they need it then they are wallowing in the mire wallowing there blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled so there must be a hunger to be pleasing to God all the days of our lives Is it in your Bible, be ye holy as I'm holy? Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. They are all in New Testament. Be not deceived. No unrighteous man shall make heaven. It's in the Bible. And he made a list of them. No, you know, the unrighteous in the kingdom of God. No matter who they may be, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if only on this earth we have profit, then we are most of all men miserable. How many want to make heaven here? You better begin to do righteousness. The work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. All round rest requires righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody blessed. There are many who love to preach. There are those who are sent to preach. There are different classes of people. Jesus came to pay the capital price for our sin so we can live a life that pleases God and make heaven at the end of our journey. No one shall miss it. Everyone under the sound of my voice today, you will make heaven. We shall all meet on the streets of glory. What does it take to enjoy the reality of all and race? One, one must be born again. This is what salvation connotes. It is receiving Jesus into our heart. Revelation 5, Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open to me, I will come in. Now, that is the mystery of salvation. Jesus coming into the heart of a mortal man. Amen. And Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, we are told, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called what? Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. 
So at new birth, the prince of peace comes to reside in you. So you have a fountain of peace on your inside. As I said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give unto you. So at new birth, you have received the prince of peace into your heart. So you have a fountain of peace within you. And that is the number one step to enjoy all round rest. Accepting Jesus into your life so you can possess a fountain of peace within you. So in the midst of the storm, you are fast asleep on a pillow. Yeah. You can't feel it. Because the Prince of Peace resides in you. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. This is so important. Look, we must not appropriate salvation. We must experience it. The way things are going today, we'll come into church, we'll soon be equated with salvation. In fact, a number of people now don't make any other call. No. So nice to have you in our church today. Thank you very much. So nice to have you. There are many believers who can't tell what time they got saved. Amen. There are many, many believers today around the world who can't tell what time they got saved. Not even the year. They can't tell. There was no definite experience. It's just an appropriated salvation. That's not safe. A friend of mine told me something very humbling a few years back. He said, can I tell you something? I said, no, you can tell me. He said, I was only following you because you're my friend. I didn't know the meaning of salvation all those years. He was telling me the truth. Amen. That's after I retired from one of the organizations. And now, a, you know, a sound believer and it's called to ministry. You know what I'm talking about? But he, I didn't know. I didn't know salvation. I didn't know. There are people sitting down in church today who can't tell when they were saved. Why don't you make today that day? Yes. Instead of guesswork. Amen. Make today that day. Instead of saying, well, I think. No, you should know. February 19, 1969, I delivered myself to Jesus. And he came into my life. And it's an experience I can't forget. Glory to God. Please, please, please. You, you need this prince of peace on your inside to enjoy the reality of all unrest. I've not had the first sleepless night on this ministry in my life. You need this prince of peace on your inside. Not to run out of peace in the race of life. Very important. So salvation is not just being a member of a church. It's becoming a member of God's own household. A member of God's own family. And then all that pertains to God begins to manifest in your life. Number two, one must seek to know the truth concerning our all-round rest in Christ. Isaiah 59 verse 8. The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. And whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. So we need to learn the truth regarding our all and rest in Christ. Very important. Because all of our inheritance is delivered by the knowledge of the truth. According to his divine power, he's given us all things that are made for life and, knowledge and, and, and godliness through the knowledge of him. So we can only take deliver what belongs to us through revelation of the truth. Praise God. We need to seek to learn the truth concerning our all and rest in Christ. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. You are restless. You are struggling for survival. Come and learn of me, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 28 and 29. We must seek to learn. We must com be committed to learning 
the truth concerning our all round rest in Christ. In Psalm 119, verse 165, the Bible says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. Amen. Walking by the wall guarantees great peace. Great peace. Great peace of day that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Whosoever has my commandment and keeps it is the one that loves me. And I will manifest myself to him. When Jesus is in the boat, there will be calm. Can I hear your amen? amen. Okay. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, he said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, we can multiply peace. Amen. We can multiply grace by knowledge. We must seek to know more of him so we can enjoy more of his peace in our life. Number three, we must continue to build our faith in the world concerning our all and rest in Christ. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, the word says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that had it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So we, it takes faith to enter into that rest based on the finished work of Christ. Can I hear your amen? Now, you go to verse 6 of it for time. Verse 6 said, Same therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not because of unbelief. So it takes faith to enter into that realm of rest. Now, verse 9. He said, there, he said, there remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Now, go to the next verse. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from it. So you don't struggle with life anymore. Can I hear your amen? amen? Now, go to the next verse. Let us therefore labor. That's where the task is. To enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same manner of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful. So let's labor in the word in building our faith so we can enter into that rest. We labor, we labor. We are not just, you know, glancing through pages of scriptures. We labor in the word to build our faith so we can enter into that rest. Can I hear your amen? A few times, my wife and I have been involved in some um, accident. Praise God. And you need to see me under such conditions. Absolute rest. Relax. Amen. Relax. The world has eaten you up. Whatever can jitter God can jitter you. Relax. In Jesus' name, no, no, once is enough. Don't say many Jesus' name on one thing. <laughs> Praise God. Relax, relax. Great and peace multiplies by knowledge. Yes. Multiplied by what? Knowledge. Something is breaking forth in your life. It's the dawning of a new day for you. So stop waiting for things to happen. Start working them out. Start what? Start walking. He said, Walk. If you don't walk out your salvation, it will lose worth. Mm. It, nobody will know you are saved. After some time, your tongue will be dry. <laughs> it's dry. No lubricant. Praise God. <laughs> so, so we, we need to walk it out, sir. We need to walk things out. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Something's breaking forth in your life. Let me hear your loudest amen. Thank you, Lord. We must continue to build our faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith and you quench all the fear the dance of the devil. Number four, we must remain in love with God in truth and in deed. You know why? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. How many things? That's all unrest. All things we know, we are not guessing. All things work together for good to them that love God. All things. All things. That's your new realm. From now, all things begins to work together for good for you. At home, at work, in your spiritual life, in your health, over your children, over your grandchildren, over your career. All is not for them that love God. Not for them that go to church. Yes, they can prove that they love God by going to church to worship him. But for them that love God in truth and in deed, let us not love God in words or in tongue, but in truth and in deed. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in truth and in deed. First John 3, 18. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8, he said this do to prove the sincerity of your love. There are things to do to prove the sincerity of our love. Do you love me? He said, I do. Go after my lamb. Are you sure you love me? I do. Go after my sheep. There are things to do to prove that we love God. Jesus, David said, now because of my affection for the house of my God, I've given all out of my own proper good. So there are things we do to prove that we love God. It's not a song to sing. It's a thing to do. There are things to do to prove that we love God. There are things to do to prove that we love God. I once said, no matter how much of my materials we have read, how much of the tapes you have listened to, you can't, you can't claim to have found my secret until you discover my heartbeat for God. Amen? Praise God. I know my dying does not add anything to God, but it won't matter to me. No. I just love you. I can't help it. You can't love God and not know. Peter said, you know I love you. He said, you sure you love me? He said, you know yes. that you know that you know. You, you know in your knowing yes, that I love you. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. You can't love God and not know, can you? Amen. They took me to one restaurant in America. They have been talking about the restaurant. You know, we went for one minister's conference. And they said, well, it's, it's such a great restaurant. So we got there and it was all glass. Said, you know, okay. When I went through the table, I said, where is the food? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the food yet. <laughs> I won't tell you what they put on the table. As soon as I left, I called Chinese restaurant to bring me food. <laughs> Amen. I don't love that food. I can't pretend. You can't love God and not know. Amen. Praise God. Some of my friends were licking their mouth. They were enjoying it. They were really enjoying it. I was managing myself. That we will soon be out of here. I can go and eat. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's breaking new ground. Well, every devil of unrest gets off your back today. Number five, every soul winner, listen very carefully, 
is a distributor of peace and no one lacks what he gives people only lack what they keep say with me no one lacks what he gives people only lack what they keep Proverbs 11, 24 and 25, there is he that scattered and yet has more. There's one that withhold them more than his mate, but he tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall himself be watered unto. Now, listen to this. In Ephesians 6, 5, among the weapons of our warfare, we saw listed here, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, that is your feet shot with the feet shot with the propagation of the gospel of peace. I'm coming. Now, Isaiah 52 and verse 7. It says, How beautiful upon the mountain, the mountains are the feet of them that bring it good tidings that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, thy God reigneth. So every soul winner is a publisher of peace, a propagator of peace, a distributor of peace. Luke 10, 5 and 6, whatever house you enter into, Say first to that house, peace be unto this house. And to whatever house ye enter, first say, peace. I have brought you the gospel of peace. Can I hear your amen? amen. So every soul winner is a distributor of peace. And you don't lack what you give, you only lack what you keep. What to give multiplies back to you. Hallelujah. So every soul winner keeps enjoying multiplied peace in return. What do I call it? There is what to do to take delivery of whatever Christ has provided for us in redemption. Among the things to do for all the rest is to be a distributor of peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. Publishing peace. Bringing salvation to peace. Then it keeps beautifying your life. Can I hear your amen? amen? Whatever good thing any man does, the same. Shall he receive from the Lord? The same. The same. You give peace. You receive peace back. In multiplied form. Why the art minute? See, time and harvest shall not see. So you begin to enjoy harvest of peace. Harvest of peace, harvest of peace, harvest of peace, harvest of peace. Thank you, Jesus. A professor spoke to me last week and he said, Sir, I just wanted you to know you can never know how many children you have. He said, 1981, I gave my life to Christ in your meeting at so and so place. Amen. He's a professor of medicine. He said, You never know how many children you have, but I just felt I should let you know this. I want to thank God for your life. We are still running in the race. Can I hear your amen? 1981. That's some days. Praise God. How beautiful upon the man a day that bring good tidings. And that's you. So get excited. You'll never run out of peace anymore in your life. Number six, as we round up, be committed to worshiping God in church. Be committed to worshiping God in church. Hebrews 10, verse 25, the word commands not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching. Why? Second Chronicles 15 verse 3 to 5, 
the Bible talking said, now for a long season, Israel was without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble, you'll be troubled when you are without a teaching priest. Because knowledge is not multiplying, so peace is drying up. Now, turn unto the Lord God of, the, of the, the God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Now, in those days, there was no peace to him that went up, no peace to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Why? No true God, no teaching priest, no law. The teaching priests of God are reside, they reside in church. Where do they reside? They reside in church. I will give you pastors after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. They shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Pastors reside in church. Amen. Amen. So be committed to worshiping God in church. That is where knowledge multiplies and peace multiplies too much. Grace and peace multiplies by knowledge. The church is God's knowledge center. Has anybody caught any light here today? Yes. Now you can wait on your own for the next three years and not catch this. Mm, mm. Next three years because it's not given to you. Mm. It's not given to you. It's in thy life shall we see that light. So the teaching priests are illuminated individuals who are out to illuminate others. We, we must get to this. We must get to know this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. They lay in the temple and from house to house. Ask chapter 5 and verse 42. It's a two-way worship agenda that God has for the church. And they lay in the temple and in every house. They cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. That is the verdict of heaven. They lay in the temple. Not once a week. They lay in the temple from house to house. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's story is changing. Thank you, Father. Finally, enter into a covenant to keep serving God and the interest of this kingdom as a way of life. Enter into a covenant to keep serving God and the interest of his kingdom as a way of life. This is one vital way to enjoy the reality of all and rest. The same Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 12. The Bible says that they enter into a covenant to seek or to serve the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their souls. Now, and they entered into a covenant. Now, verse 13. Let's go to 13 and 14. Now, that whosoever will not serve the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. <laughs> and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornet. And all Judah rejoice at the oath for they are sworn with all their heart and sorting with the whole of their desire. And he was fond of them and the Lord gave them rest around that's your new level. Many have entered into that covenant in this church. Such individuals will have the privilege of renewing that covenant today. Some have never entered into it and wonder, would this solve my problem? You will enter into that covenant today. And you watch how God will keep decorating your life in grand style. Can I hear your amen? Amen. The young lions may suffer want and hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Wherever you see seek, put serve. They that serve the Lord shall never lack any good thing. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all this thing. Seek ye first. Not seek ye, seek ye first. Let it become your priority for living. And all these things shall be added to you. That's the kind of all unrest 
that that mystery of us. I'm sure it's clear right now that those things don't drop on our laps. We walk them out. What do we do? Thank you, Jesus. How many know what to do now to enjoy all and rest all their life? Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks for the privilege to hear the things that you have heard and for standing your faith in this awesome service. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed.